Now I'm in Bristol at the Clifton Rock Railway and we're just by the Clifton Suspension Bridge which is over there. Let's go and take a look at the old railway. The Clifton Suspension Bridge. This world famous bridge was designed by Isabel Kingdom Brunel, 1806 to 1859. The chief engineer of the Great Western Railway and the designer of the SS Great Britain, now preserved in the former Bristol City docks. Work on the supporting piers which started in 1831 was halted when funds ran out. The final design was modified by members of the Institution of Civil Engineers before the completion of the bridge in 1864 as a memorial to Brunel. The principal dimensions are as follows. Total length 1,351 feet. Total span 702 feet. Width 31 feet. Height of road above high water 245 feet. Height appears 86 feet. The lamp above your head, that was uh, discovered by a couple of my colleagues in, uh, well, uh, in the tunnel. They put it back up together and um, it shows the site as it uh, was originally lit by gas. And uh, unfortunately it's the only example that uh, we found. If you walk around uh, Clifton you can find uh, lamp posts uh, with uh, a similar top hat design. They've been converted to electric, but their gas origin is um, quite obvious. But if you walk around Clifton, you can still find a couple of streets that are still lit by gas. And I'll leave you to find those. Now the original entrance would have been behind you, at the top of the steps. When Bristol, uh, when the bus company actually took over, the Clifton Rocks Railway Company went to receivership in 1912 and they were bought out by the bus company. George uh, paid uh, £30,000 for uh, the railway when he built it, but the bus company built, bought it for a knockdown 1,500 quid. A bit of money lost there somewhere, I think. He was looking for somewhere to uh, build a air raid shelter and an abandoned um, railway tunnel is an obvious candidate. So basically what you're going to see today all dates from that period. Uh, we can't take you into the tunnels today, it really takes too long. If you fancy going on the long trip, speak to the colleagues on the back uh, table and they can give you uh, dates for some of the available tours. It takes about two hours and uh, you can go down into the air raid shelters, you can go and have a look at the BBC section into the bottom station. The only caveat is you've got to come all the way back upstairs again. And the number of steps doubles each time you come up those stairs. I can tell you from the experience. Right. Now the original uh, tunnel here would have been completely bare. And, uh, the uh, Ministry of Works, when they came in, they put a staircase each side of the tunnel and the space in between they cut into rooms, the largest being the three air raid shelters. Now, uh, the tunnel's about 400 feet long. We're 200 feet above the bottom station. Gradients, I think, are about 2.1. I have to be honest and say I've never had enough puff to count the number of stairs. You spend £30 a month on your gym membership and I've got a stair climber here that can actually kill people so um, just uh, be, wa be wary of that. There's uh, a lot of history uh, here at the railway. 
and I have to admit that uh, really all we can show you today is the 1940s. We've got an enormous bunker here and uh, the originally the staircase was about around to the left. There would have been a ticket booth uh, just inside. And if you look at the floor you can see there's a line of turnstiles going across. So you'd have bought your ticket, come through the turnstiles to a waiting area here and then you'd have boarded one of four cars. Now, uh, if you're a member of the public, if you'd use one of the two cars at this side, you climb up the steps, and like today, you'd have got wet. If you're a guest at the hotel, then you'd have used the two st uh, cars the other side. And then you could have gone through the passageway, into the uh, ballroom, and into the hotel. But uh, trying to run all four cars was a problem for the railway, uh, mainly due to a shortage of water. And Linton is actually built on a stream, but Bristol was always short of water. So uh, for most of the time they uh, we could only able to run two cars. But um, I think the most they ever travelled I think was opening day when I think 6,000 people travelled. But um, unfortunately um, their uh, success didn't uh, maintain itself. But why would you build a railway here? It seems odd now. But in the 1890s, uh, 1900s, you're right in the middle of the uh, transport hub. <laughs> At the bottom station, immediately opposite, you've got the ferry landing, possible destinations, Cleveton, Ilfra Coombe, across to Wales, uh, Penarth, maybe others. Uh, if you go under the suspension bridge, back in the bushes, you see the terminus of the Port and Pier Railway. And that ran uh, all the way down this side of the gorge to Avonmouth and the, uh, the ships. But unfortunately, in the, by the 1920s, the port of Hot Wells is in decline. And uh, 1926, the portway is open, and um, unfortunately, that killed the railway stone dead. There's nowhere for it to go, there's nowhere for people to go when they're down there. You've driven along the portway, it's like being on the M1 now. And uh, Bristol City Council, who own the uh, Bolton Station, would not be happy to allow the public in and out of that. So even if we manage to get the railway up and running again, there's nowhere for it to go. But you never know. 30 years, it may become a footpath again. I can but hope. But uh, other, uh, other options say you take it back to 1940s. The air raid shelters, the BBC being here, and refurbish that. Both arguments are equally true. And uh, we don't really know where... Um, it's uh, going to lead. The object of the group really is to make the people of Bristol aware of it. As a teenager I looked over the, uh, the walls and I could see the drive wheels and uh, but many residents of Clifton didn't even know the railway still existed. So the preservation group really is here just to make people of Bristol aware. Sorry guys. Alright. Come through guys. Now that window didn't exist when we first came in, so uh, the only way to get down to the track bed was to climb over the top of the bunker, put a ladder down, and uh, we actually dug out the hole of the track bed for about two feet of rubble. And uh, if you look at the entrance to the tunnel, you see it's actually sealed with a blaster. The top right hand corner is actually open to the elements, we've got some hoardings over it to keep the weather out. It does, that you will climb, we try and climb over the wall, see what was the other side of it. And we're quite amazed to discover there's actually a hidden room. Uh, the turnstile here that we have has been in there, what, about 80 years? Believe it or not, um, it, still, um, it still works. The, uh, the station is less than half the size it was originally, and now we just have the room here. Uh, these are not original, we think they date from uh, the bus company coming in uh, in 1912-1913. Photograph of the wall shows the three gentlemen involved, George Hughes in the middle, Mark Croydon Marks. Photograph here shows the railway as it was oper in operation, and you can see one, two, three, four sets of tracks. It's the only underground funicular railway running four cars. Very simple wooden car, a bit like a stagecoach. 
The, uh, the tunnel itself is not lit. The only lamp is an oil lamp which is in each of the cars. The bottom station, as you've seen, still exists. It's all bricked up, but when the BBC came in, that's where they wanted their wartime headquarters. The four cars that were here uh, were lowered to the bottom station when the Ministry of Works came in, but uh, the BBC wanted that particular place for their uh, headquarters. And we've got one final photograph behind the gate there showing the cars before they were taken out and destroyed. The, uh, the bottom station was bricked up. There's a two foot thick glass wall uh, behind it and the BBC office isn't there. Um, and they just abandoned it. The station is as it was left in the 1940s. And uh, if you go on the long trips, you can actually go in. Uh, the only way into it now is to crawl through the ducting um, to get in. We haven't lost a customer yet, but um, we'll see what happens. You've been warned. When the uh, railway was operating, penny up, hate me down. Bring Cliff, it's posh, you pay more, you know that. If you want to bring your bicycle, it cost you tuppence. And for uh, threepence, the mailman could bring his mail cart. Fourpence would have been a uh, through ticket on the tram from Hot Wales. You come up on the railway and uh, you can go back into town on the bus. And uh, I remember uh, my mother telling me that she and her mother did exactly that trip. They came up on a day trip from Tiverton. The uh, young lady looking out from one of the cars. The cabin in the middle would have held one of these water valves. Water came from a reservoir behind the wall, pipe under the floor, and you see the step concrete lintel, the photograph inside of it, the thin layer of nylon that's off to keep you uh, warm. It doesn't work, I've tried it. Uh, unfortunately, the tunnels are very wet. Just a word of warning, uh, a colleague of mine with a sense of humour has left a plastic rat in the alcove. So, um, can we uh, just bear that in mind? Come on through. Oops, sorry, can I just sneak through? Oh. I'm going to lose my voice already. <coughs> Right, the cabinet here shows uh, many of the things that we've um, recovered excavating in the tunnel. The top shelf, milk bottles, I never realised there were so many different dairies in and around uh, Bristol. Each one's got their own uh, distinctly shaped bottle. Uh, other things we find, cups, rarely plates and saucers. It's unusual to remember they used to give out free cocoa in the shelter, but you had to bring your own cup. People think, leave things on the lintels, they get knocked off overnight, 80 years later you've got an enthusiast who's excavating. The tunnels have been uh, derelict for years, there's nothing of value left here, but from an archaeologist's point of view it's, quite, it's a little gem. Uh, the tunnels, have, the entrances have been insecure, they had a raven here one weekend. They got in through the bottom station, you see the uh, fairy lights on the stairs leading up to the uh, shelter where they held the party. In subsequent years we had less welcome visitors, drug addicts and the like, and volunteers have got to be mindful of sharks wherever they work. When we first came in we used to be able to look through the window at the top and we could see what was left of the ornate um, ceiling. Unfortunately, um, it doesn't look like that now. And, um, they got as far as, um, uh, they got managed to get planning permission to demolish it as a car park extension for the hotel. And um, unfortunately, uh, if you look at the photograph above, that's really what it looks like now. The new owners were told have planning permission to refurbish it. Um, we think um, that um, it's more value to them as a, a venue than uh, a car park. It's the largest venue of its size anywhere this side of Bristol. <laughs> Clifton Rocks Railway or UK, if you've got access to the internet, you can see a lot of these photographs and uh, you can follow uh, what's happening with the restoration. Uh, if you're really keen, you can actually sign up, become members and uh, get involved. We're always looking for uh, new people to help. Uh, Anyone into, um, you got any gardeners amongst you? 
No, anyway, and I'm good at weeding. How about weeding for some acrobatics? Some of the more exotic places that need doing. Um, if you fancy a little more restful, then how about um, excavating in the tunnel itself? So, uh, <coughs> we remember doing this, the electricity supply was a little erratic, and uh, on one particular occasion I was in precisely that position, and the lights went out. I'm talking, it's darkness, you cannot see hand in front of face. But uh, it's an interesting experience. But uh, anyway, that really sums up the short tour today. Can I thank you very much for coming? But before you go, can I suggest when you go outside, you go left, have a look at the front entrance of the hydropathic centre because it's at the back of the building. Unfortunately, there's a lot of porter cabins today that are obstructing the entrance, so uh, the uh, you can still see the ornate stonework. Uh, it's difficult to see George News initials above the entrance. Um, I suspect some of you may have had a, a drink or two on the veranda on a summer's evening, some day. Ever wondered what was below your feet? It's uh, originally a Victorian Turkish bath. It dates from about 1897. So uh, uh, we don't know what it's like. We would like to be able to open that, but uh, perhaps the uh, hotel can be persuaded in the future. That really sums up the, uh, the tour today. If you want interest uh, notes about uh, when the next trips are, speak to the ladies on the table. If you need a memento of your uh, trip today, we can help you with that as well. Can I say thank you very much for coming, and I hope I haven't bored you. Thank you. Can you just tell me your website address, and are you on Facebook as well? CliftonRocksRailway.org.uk, and yes, we're on Facebook. Thank you very much. Okay, take a thank you for coming. I wish it was. I wish him luck. Um, we we need some. Um, yeah, well, I think they'll make more of it. We're going to have a look.